Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Mm. God is going to send some locusts and frogs. River is about to cross your little town. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is David Bell. My name is Tom Ryman. And we just watched The Reaping. Therapy. Uh, yeah. Therapy. Thera- therapy. Yeah. It's like therapy, but you're you're doing ther- your yeah. therapy. But you're getting the wrath of God meted upon you. Hmm. Mm, delicious. Thousands of years ago, there was a series of bizarre occurrences. Blood, frogs, flies, dead livestock. That many believe to have been the ten biblical plagues. The Bible says that God sent the plagues as warnings. What is he supposed to be saying now? Others believe there are scientific explanations. Folks, I worry that this is a plague. As an Old Testament plague? As in God, Moses, the whole deal. So what, what's going on? Um, hey, Burrito, our Patreon producer... Thank you so much. Thank you, Burrito. Uh, this was brought to you by Burrito, who had us watch the 2007 film The Reaping from the director of Predator 2. And the life and death of Peter Sellers. Yeah. Yeah. And this... Uh, and uh, Nightmare I, on Elm Street Part 5. The Dream oh, Child. nice. No, good, it's, it's a good, dir- good. director that I actually like. Yes. Um, <laughs> also, I many seasons, many episodes of 24, apparently. Oh, weird. Uh, yeah, this has uh, got a hell of a cast. It's uh, Hillary Swank. Uh, Can I... To my surprise, oh, you oh, want to oh, say? No, 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 please. You, you may continue. And then I want to say something. After you finish the cast, I want to say something else that uh, surprising that it has. Okay. Uh, Idris Elba is yep. the one that threw me the that, fuck off. That shut my mouth. I started yep. the movie and it, it, it opens with Hillary Swank investing some shit, investigating some shit, and her partner walks in and it's Idris Silva. I was like, "What? Yeah, no like, idea right. he was in this movie. I I didn't either. I I had seen this movie once and I had no fucking idea. It has the governor in it um, from The Walking Dead? Um, oh, is he um, Doug? Is he the main bad yeah, guy? Yeah, he's the main guy. That and, is the uh, governor, isn't it? I didn't recognize him. Yeah. Uh, How'd you like this movie? Well, the the other thing I wanted to say about it, you said it no. has a surprising cast. It also has a surprising review. It's one of the worst reviewed movies of all time. Of all time? I think so. Wow. It has pretty abysmal reviews across the board. That's, I, think, I, I mean, I think a lot has, of I think movies. it has like a three on Metacritic. Wow. Like it's real low. Yeah, I mean, I can, I know why. Yeah, it's, I don't uh, hate it, this movie, but I know why. Yeah, this is... Uh, how did I like this movie? Um, <laughs> oh, it also has fucking Stephen Ray in it. It sure does. Stephen, mention- Stephen Ray in one of my favorite horror movie sub-character cameos of all time. Uh, yeah. Uh, this, Dave, this movie is incredibly boring, but it's also kind of beautiful and i know we're gonna watch it on a f- f- i kind of love it i love i love how fucking bad it is yeah so yeah it's it's kind of mid i would say but it also i'm also right there with you where i i didn't hate watching it um it was it, it, it's its biggest problem is it's boring it's very boring until the last 20 minutes Yes, and then it, my my final note was why wasn't this the whole movie? Right, and it um, ha- and it has a I will say it, it's very boring until the last twenty minutes. It has a genuine good twi- genuinely good twist. One genuinely good twist. They throw another there at the end that they didn't need. <laughs> but 
It has, right. it has one yes. genuinely good twist, and that is no, the the twist that I think is good. Is, I mean, spoilers obviously for this almost twenty year old film. Yeah, um, is the reveal is that a character very pointedly asks, and I think it's Hillary Swank, why? What, what, I mean, we should, you know, it, it 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 might make sense to explain the plot. The, the the reveal is that this is actually God. God is punishing this village because the village is evil. That's the reveal. Right. Like it really is yes. God meeting out plagues because all of the characters you have met are fucking evil. That's a good yeah, twist. Yeah, which makes it makes more sense of. It's a good twist. It explains a bit. It doesn't explain other things like why they called Hillary Swank um, the evil town <laughs> to like solve this. Um, like, right. Cause the, the, why would the town do this? Um, to call this like famous skeptic. So the plot is that Hillary Swank is a famous skeptic. She does classes on being a skeptic. So famous that she's Um, based on a real life skeptic who actually was her character coach for the movie. Like the character character consultant, like they hired the real life person to be her consultant for 2007's The Reaping amazing uh it starts in like um a uh, uh, south america um, it's chile chile it starts in chile. chile where the the actual so i l- read into this the actual town was very offended <laughs> because they they do the trope and what i mean by that is like everything is poor and yellow and everybody everything's magic they you do, know the they south do. america is magic trope where like god is just walking the streets of South America. It's the exorcist trope. It's exorcism yes. movies do this about every central and South American country, and it's so fucking racist. Yeah, where there's just possessions everywhere. Well, they're also, and, like, they're the also devil all is in just... the 19th century? Yes. Yeah, and the town this took place in was this like, is the Chile. Is this? Like, it's not... Yeah. <laughs> What are you it's doing? a modern city. It's a modern country and with a modern city. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And so she, it starts with that, and the, she goes hard on the idea that poor people are dumb because she's like, oh, it was. It, she solves a. There's like all these people worshiping radioactive waste, essentially, and this woman's like rubbing the corpse juice on her daughter, and she's like, "Don't do that." And it's like, well, it's some like, earthquake has un, has opened up the tomb of a of a saint, and he's been perfectly right. preserved. And she and Israel Zelba are there to investigate why, and it's because there's this like pocket of deadly gas right beneath it in the earth that has been preserving the body but all these people think it's a miracle anyway right that's the context yeah and so she proves it wrong and they establish that she's like very brave and curious which i only point out because they don't really do anything with that um none of these people are characters yes in order for her to debunk this she has to like go it deep in this crypt where no one else would go um and so you're instead like, of, oh, okay. Instead of like sending a robot with a thermometer or, you know, the actual right. way that they would test a, a fissure in the earth. Right. So she gets called her and Idris Elba by the governor who's like, my town is the, the river went red and everybody is blaming this little girl and wants to kill her. We want you to come debunk it. So she shows up at this, this town that's like, you know, off, off the maps. Um, very like everything is... Uh, I would assume, I would say like suspiciously unassuming, very friendly town. Um, and we get this kind of slow burn of like the town starts getting bits of plague. Um, she, she stays at the governor's plantation house. Um, with Idris Elba. And with Idris Elba, who's like her wingman. They're, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're BFFs. They they, they, learn... they they tell each other about their own romantic conquests, so we know that they're not an item. Yeah, we learn is he's very religious, um, which I I like the idea. He's very religious, and he's going around with the skeptic, um, almost to like keep her honest. I felt like, however, he really accepts what's happening with very little evidence, and so does she. Like that's one of the next things that happens is basically like. It's uh, the rivers turn lead. F- I would argue a handful of frogs rain. Like, like I would say five frogs. It's more than five, but yeah, it's it's a couple. Yeah. It's a couple of dozen, but it's a very li- it's a light misting of frogs. It is not a full on rain. F- like they get flies just on their barbecue. Um, they get boils and, then, and stuff. It's. I just wanted to say real quick. It's having 
the Idris Elba character, to keep her honest, is fine. But they also reveal that she was an ordained minister. Yes. Who lost her it's faith. A lot. So it's like, so there's two religious people here. It's just she's lost her faith. Right. And again, but, I would I would just anyway. Go ahead. I would argue that Idris Elba is by the cows, he's like, This is real. And I thought that was wild. Because he's been going around, she says she's like solved thirty cases with him. And it's like surely they've seen like the opening His, we well, saw was wilder than this. Lord help me, Dave, in defense of the movie The Reaping. <laughs> His point is the cows are the fourth thing that has happened since they've got there. And they're right. all biblical plagues. He's like, is yes. it really a string of coincidences? <laughs> well, okay, here's my argument. Is that the 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 river is big. The frogs, again, was very brief. Right, like it, it's not even Magnolia level. Like it is, I know it's more than five, but it doesn't like happen for more than a couple seconds, and it's just like some frogs plop down in a swamp, like in a place where frogs would right. already they be. Could have, they could have just fallen out of the trees, which right. is probably. I'm not saying what it's happened. not weird. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not weird. I'm saying that as a skeptic, who their whole thing is debunking stuff, there's a lot of explanation, and then the flies are just on the barbecue and nowhere else. And so like, that's not really a plague. Like that's just some flies. Well, there were right? there, like, mm, no, it wasn't some flies. It was a cloud of flies and maggot, mag- maggots suddenly appeared on their barbecue when Doug turned away for one second. Like it was explicitly Again, supernatural. Oh no, no, it's not. I'm not saying it's not weird. Um, I'm saying that it's not that much. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, pretty, like in terms of like, in terms of a plague, when you say plague and stuff like, like the, like I, I was like, it will be flies and maggots everywhere, right? That's right, what the it's, biblical version. It's interesting that they keep going with the stuff that's all things that just kind of happen. Like, oh, the river turned red. Yeah, we know about that now. It's algal blooms right. and all sorts of reasons why water bodies of water turn red and, and massive die offs of the animals therein occur. Um, rain right. of frogs. Well, yeah, they got poisoned by the red river whatever turned the river and they fell out of the trees uh the cows right. they're drinking the fucking water uh the right. flies i don't know man flies show up sometimes so it's you're right it's all just these real mild things that they're focused. right it's, but it's, those are the plagues it's a point that she makes in that scene um which would be an it's an interesting premise for a movie to start from but not this movie where he's laying out for it's like the cows like are we really going to say all four of the all, we've witnessed now almost half of the 10 biblical plagues. Like, right. are we going to entertain the idea that maybe we can't debunk this? Um, and then she rattled, she goes on an explanation where she debunks all 10 plagues from the, from the Bible. That's right. really interesting. And yeah. that's a good idea for a jumping off point from a movie. Like, I know why they made this movie, but like, yeah, it just sort of goes out the, like her, her being a skeptic doesn't, matter after a certain point it's it's right after the scene they get the tests back for the the chemical tests back for the water and they find out that the water is just human blood and from that moment on she's all in she's, she's no, all in. no more yes. science no more science she is suddenly just in a horror movie and is yeah. terrified and running so it's yes, it's, weir- it's weird it's weird that we did all of that work for her entire opinion to be changed by reading numbers off of a piece of paper that we don't even get to see it's like yeah. a, it's a it's a weird the movie weirdly undercuts her epiphany in that way yes it undercuts a lot like they get lice at one point and they're like look like, all right. I, it, it, like, it, I forgot. It, I literally forgot about it until you mentioned yeah. it. It's such a minor, like they really yada yada some of the plagues because there's a lot of plagues right. in the Bible. There's, they you, really you only yada hear yada about the, the plagues. Some of them are just lice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like cool lice. Yeah, yeah. That just sounds like this is a really impoverished community. I don't know, man. Like it, it just, right. it just sounds like you guys are struggling. It's that it's like the the beginning is such a slow burn where it's like okay I, I I that's a cool idea to do the plague but it's like small small time little but then like you said she just is all so in it's, the it's, moment it's a, a, the ten plagues focus on a small Louisiana town it's parochial everybody's it's idyllic everybody's really church going it just like the twist is a good idea it's just man this movie 
it's so good bro- it, it's so boring up until the reveal that it's been village yeah. of the damned the whole time yeah the uh, i mean it should go without saying like it's 2007 the horror the extent of the scares is loud things like they cut to like a kettle going off like it's just we're gonna clap next to the microphone yeah there's no it's a lot of just loud things happening there's no suspense there's a lot of just like dirty girl little girls with their hair in their face like it's it's very the ring they're chasing this one girl the whole movie and then you find out she's not evil yes which i would argue (laughs) so this is again the characters it's never the characters are never doing the things that are so obvious because like call child protective services you know, Hillary Swank Call just breaks the into this state house. Police. Yes, there's there like is a you, hilarious you, line that ahead. happens way too late where she sees the dead boy and then goes, "Call the FBI." <laughs> and I thought that was so funny because I was like, "Thank you." Right as soon as it was, as soon as Doug comes to her college and it's like, "Will you come down to our small town in Louisiana and convince them not to lynch a little girl that they believe is making the water turn red?" She should have been like, "I'm calling the state police." Right. This is a job because like, clear because clearly your fucking sheriff or whoever you have down there is not handling this. So right. And Obviously, she, a little girl did not turn your river red. You fucking idiots. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, just there's why so many she moments. gets in his car and goes with him to fucking Nowheresville, Louisiana. Uh, she doesn't get in his car. She she and Idris Elba follow him down later. Right. But like, why they drive down there on that? Just like, we'll better investigate this instead of we should report this lynching that's about to happen. Right. There's a it's it's a lot of that. It's a lot of characters reacting to situations in ways that you just simply wouldn't. Again, they they call her a skeptic immediately. The idea is she's supposed to be level headed, inquisitive. So it makes sense, like why she keeps breaking into people's houses, I guess. But um, like, she gets to a point where she just. <laughs> Starts believing this girl is evil. Remember when she first meets the girl, she goes to this rundown house, breaks in, nobody's around, and she finds the girl, and she has blood running down her dress, and she tells her that she's going to become a woman. (laughs) She's like, oh, it's okay, you're getting your period. To which I was thinking, like, you need to call someone, right? Like, this is clear signs of, like, abuse. Like, this girl is alone. She's bleeding, like, what, what is happening? Like, she doesn't react to that situation the way any normal human being would, right? And at no point does someone go, we need to call someone to take this girl out of this environment. Um, none of that. Well, she's so, The mom shows she, up and is like, are you here to kill my, girl, like, my daughter? And she's like, no. And she's like, why not? To which, again, you have to go, okay, we need to take this girl away from her mother, right? Or you make a beat out of it later where it's like, because that, that, that could be like a legitimate thing for a suspense film. I know it's been done before. Um, where you're so caught up in the supernatural of it, you're not seeing the obvious explanation that this is right. a, a malnourished girl that's experienced something traumatic. Yeah. It's like, oh, she's right. an she agent of the speak. devil that has magic. It's like, no. <laughs> right, that's the thing. She spends the whole time like they're debating whether or not she's the, the, the cause of the, the plagues. Devil. And somebody points out, I, I mentioned this earlier, but I wanted to say it now that we've explained the plot and what the twist is. It's either yeah. Hillary Swank or Idris Elba, I can't remember which, but one of them points out, these are the biblical plagues from God. If it's the, why right. is the, are we saying, are we arguing that the devil is is visiting these? Because that's where they are. Because the, all the yeah, townsfolk are like, line. are clutching their pearls over getting these biblical plagues. Like the little girl must be an agent of the devil. She's bringing it. And one of them points out, well, in the Bible, the plagues were visited, I think it's Hillary Swank. The plagues were visited on the on the pharaoh because he wouldn't let god's people go like it was punishing him for a very specific thing he was doing right so it's like why are these happening here in small town louisiana now right and they don't that's what's funny no one asked that question right away so like i they do answer it but they i do was asking that too where i'm like <laughs> yeah Right, where I was like, why would God do this in this small town and not everywhere else? And they do. And on such a weird small scale. And they do it, they say, like, oh, the devil is using right, the plague I, yeah, against us. I, I wanted to hit that too because they do such a mid aughts thing. Like, every devil possession movie released in the aughts and teens after this point sort of has a lot of embarrassing lore about each demon and the rules and stuff it has to follow. And they start doing that in this movie, which undercuts its 
its um, twist, honestly, its reveal, I get why they're doing it because they're trying to distract you away from what should be an obvious reveal. It's like, well, why would they be right. getting the biblical plagues? Well, probably because they're pissing God off. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> it's... Uh, so they do this thing where they're like, oh, the devil often uses the instruments of God to to, to trick man. I'm like, really? Where? Where? Yeah. Show me that, that passage. <laughs> Show me your work. Show me your uh, work. <laughs> but like, Stephen Ray. So they just keep saying that. And Stephen Ray I want to talk about for like 45 goddamn minutes, but really just He five. might as well have Skyped in. It's one of those where he's not shot with anybody else. No. They shot him for like a day and a half. Yeah. It starts with him finding these like burnt pictures and he just puts them in a shape randomly. Yeah. I was like, why do I make you do they, that, they man? Make a, they make the shape of a crucifix with a tail, which he insists is a sickle. Yeah. I'm like, that's not how I would describe that, man. And he keeps just calling Hillary Swank to tell her about this stuff. And he's just her guy in the van. Like, she calls him, he gives her exposition, uh, and then that's that. And he's attacked by flies? Am I remembering that correctly? N- n- no. Um, oh. Well, I mean, I think he is, but like what happens? There's like a shadow. What happens is, this is the funniest fucking thing. So, especially in light of the... Re- it, it becomes funnier when the reveal happens. So, Stephen yeah. Ray is is Hillary Swank's... He's a, he's a priest. And he's Hillary Swank's former mentor. And they did some work in Sudan, I think, where her family was killed. And there's also a, a racist component to this movie that we haven't even touched yeah. yet. Oh, my God. Well, it's a racist, again, in classes, where it's like these, these dumb, poor, and brown people... Right who are using God to do terrible things. Yeah, like um, her tragic backstory is this guy, this medicine man in the Sudan uh, blamed her and her missionary family for their hardship and just macheted her daughter and husband to death. Unreal. Unreal just fucking, fucking unreal. backstory. <laughs> it's incredible backstory. And she keeps seeing, yeah. like he's her boogeyman that she keeps seeing. Anyway. Yes. Um, so Stephen Ray was her mentor uh, and it all went bad and he's living in a tiny room in Chile, like just pouring over weird books and making feverish phone calls to Hillary Swank about this. It's like, it's a warning. There's a sect. You got to watch out for him. And she calls him later for an exposition dump on how, on like how the cult works and how to destroy them. And he's explaining like, they're basically, they're a cult of, of people who sacrifice all of their second born children to the devil um, because they're trying to create a perfect child that will be born, I guess, of the f- two firstborns. It's very convoluted. It's so fucking convoluted, and it's your eyes are rolling over in your head. And as he's yeah. saying this exposition, like she's like, "But what?" He's he's urging her to kill the little girl. That's the important thing. Yes, everybody wants her to kill this girl. With very, and, he has so such little evidence, and he's like, "Kill this child." Right, and he's the priest, and he's her mentor, yeah. and he's the person who we saw in the first scene of the movie discover the hidden message burned into the photographs, letting him know the omen, the portent of doom that was about to hang over Hillary Swank so he's the person that has like the inside info we saw from Jump so we trust right. him the movie has told us to trust him so we get right. to this scene and he is telling Hillary Swank you have got to murder that little girl and she's like what if you're wrong like what if these people are just crazy and they are just blaming this little girl and I murder her and it turns out there is no biblical plague. It was just a bunch of scientific shit that could be explained away and I've just murdered a little girl because you told me God wanted me to. And he's like, it doesn't matter. You have to keep your faith. You got to, it's that's just a kind of lie that they'll tell you. And he just basically tells her that Satan is so devious and deceptive that he just that she just needs to trust his word and kill that little girl. And then all right. of as after he says that, all of the books in his room explode and catch on fire and his door locks and he's trapped inside and we see the flames come and bear down on him as he's beating on his door. So we assume he burns to death, but nay, nay, the door blasts off its hinges after that because his room fucking explodes, Dave. He explodes yes. out of this movie. And then we and find out later that he was wrong. You right, shouldn't which, have killed the girl. Right. Which, you know what that means, right? God that means killed he him, was, not the devil. Yes. That means that God was watching God him and be like, him. 
<laughs> and being like, this son of a bitch, they, I need to they, get him to shut up. They treat it like an omen moment where he's be, like, where the priest gets lanced by the thing on the top of the church. Or like, they treat it like the omen where the devil yeah. is stopping somebody, like when it kills David Warner because he's picking up the knives. Exactly. But it's, but no. But he was wrong. He wasn't right. Yeah. So that is like, the wrath of like, God. The devil would have, would have made his signal better on the phone. Like, he would have made it easier for her to hear him because that's what he wants. He wants right. her to kill the little girl. That's what the devil yeah. actually wants. It, it, what's funny is that the devil really only manifests mainly as these townspeople. Like, that is, in fact, God's kill, killing Stephen Ray. Just like, shut up, priest. Like, he's going to die. And I assume go to heaven. And God will be right there just like, you son of a bitch. What were you talking about? Like he's like going to face face with like, God. All of his code breakers and shit. Like we worked yeah. so long on this plan. Yeah. And you're sitting there. <laughs> like we thought it was pretty clear. And yeah. when did I turn the river to blood, man? Did yeah. the devil do imagine, that? Mm -mm. Imagine fucking up so badly that God personally kills right. you. It's, That's you what fuck happens. up by misinterpreting the thing that God specifically and famously <laughs> did to punish people that pissed him off. The plagues. Yeah. That's not the devil. That is explicitly God. It's Incredible. so funny. Like it's a it's a decent like I said it's a good twist, but it's so funny that all of these devoutly religious people never get hung up on that. Like Hillary Swank brings it up, but she's immediately convinced when the river turns to blood, but she's convinced that she's convinced when the test shows that it's human blood, but she's just convinced that it's a real plague, which should convince her that it's the further convince her that it's the work of God. Right. But nobody, right. we have three characters, her Idris Elba and Stephen Ray, who are not even three. It's the whole town. Well, the whole town are Satanists. Those. Right. Okay. So those three who are explicitly two are ordained ministers. One's just a super devoutly religious dude. None of them get hung up on that. Like the thing no, that is the, the, thinks th about it. the thing that is the Lord's finishing move. This is the Lord's fatality. This is toasty. <laughs> this is God's toasty. Everybody knows that that's the move that he does. <laughs> yeah, and they're it's just so like, but sometimes it's funny. the devil. Right. They're just like, but sometimes it's the devil. Where? Where is that? <laughs> It's wild because it's a, like you said, it's a great twist. None of it adds up. It doesn't um, add up at all. It only, it's a good twist because it's a bit of a meta twist, which I think speaks to the, like, it's not a good movie. I do like the director. Um, the movie's not particularly well directed, but it handles the twist well because it's, banking on you being caught up in the super like i mentioned earlier when you're caught up in the right. supernatural stuff you overlook the obvious things like yes. it, it turns out to be i'm bringing up hill the haunting of hill house even though it turns out to be supernatural in that of course but if you remember the the sticking point of steven the eldest brother through the entire series is that the whole family is like we saw ghosts we saw ghosts and mom died and he's like no mom was mentally ill and killed herself like, right. stop telling me about ghosts, you idiots. <laughs> like, right. So, but, I mean, of course, in that it turned out to be supernatural. But it's it's a similar thing here where it's just you're, you're caught up in the, in the thrill of the story that you don't realize the, th the thing that's right in front of your face. Where it's like, oh, yeah. these people are obviously cultists. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Why is God punishing this town? Um, I, I mean, you get, you get that moment where you feel like you're like, you know, those moments where you, you know, you're getting the line that's going to be in the reveal montage where like, where she's, where th they're walking through the town and she's like, you know, Oh, is it a boy or a girl? And she's like, ah, it doesn't matter to me where like the town's too nice. And you know, like the moment I saw the governor, I was like, well, he did it. <laughs> I don't know what, but I know he did he it, did you know? Yeah. Where it's like you get that vibe where well, you're like, I know there's going to be too. more to this. Yeah, he does. Got real they didn't give him and an he, eye patch this time. but And then he mentions he's the firstborn. And I'm like, why would you say that if that wasn't exposition he, for something later? In his, in I don't the, know what it is, but I know that's something. You know, like I know that's that's in a, they don't just you don't just have a character say that. Right. They do couch it like I, I again and another bold and, and serious uh, claim, uh, statement in, in defense of the 2000. Seven mm. film, The Reaping. He doesn't say firstborn. What he says is they're driving up to his plantation house, and she's like, Holy shit, this is your house? He's like, Yeah, my grandfather left it to me. I've been trying to fix it up for a while. 
Um, and she says, well, I mean, he must have really, he must be really some, he must have really thought something of you if he left all of this to you. And he's like, well, I mean, I guess so. He didn't really have much of a choice. I come from a long line of only children. That's what he says. Right. So he doesn't. Yeah, but he doesn't, again, it's a line. Right. But it's not, I, I just wanted to make it clear that he doesn't use the same phrase that they use. Oh, like it's sure. not as yeah. obvious. Like they do hide it. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're trying. Uh, they're trying. Like there's another one where they go up to like the ruins of the old town, and he's like, I don't know. People don't much come out here, and she does call it out, and because the, there's a obviously a fire pit there that's recently been used, and she's like, Oh, people don't make it out here very much, and he just kind of she's like, I'm, Excuse me, she says, People don't make it out here very much, huh? And kind of laughs, and he just kind of shrugs and laughs it off. In that scene, you just assume, well, I mean, it's it's teenagers fucking around. Like, why wouldn't you assume right. that? But then, of course, the reveal is that oh, they actually do all this is. The old, the ruins of the old town is where they do their rituals. It's where they bring all the dead children, right? After they so, yeah, kill I want them. to talk about that. So they, so they keep killing the secondborns, right? Correct. And yes, and uh, to stop a biblical plague where the f- the final the finisher is the death of the firstborns, which we'll talk about how that is carried out in this film. Um, dude, why did <laughs> dude? It's so good. <laughs> the last Why? 20 minutes of this movie fucking rock. Anyway. Right. And so what we learn is that the little girl is actually on the side of God. They're trying to she's, kill her. Because... She's also undead, apparently. Right. Because she, she is. She is, she is she, killed. They're trying we, to kill her because... She's killed in the ritual. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. She's a second born. She's one of the second borns that they kill. And they, they couldn't... They didn't finish the ritual. Um... This is all to ask the question, why did they call Hillary, Hillary Swank um, for any of this? I'll tell you the, the reason in the script. It doesn't make any sense. I think it's but, so here's okay. I think it's so they can impregnate her. That's yep. All right. But why her and not someone like they bring in specifically a skeptic who is going to push back against killing this little girl. And then they spend the whole film trying to convince her to kill the little girl or to protect her or something. And so is the idea that they just don't care about the little girl there. It's like an ocean's 11. It's a switcheroo where it's like, we just want to impregnate you. And if that's the case, I there's a like just because she gets impregnated basically through this like weird satanic dream. She gets and it's she, like well she gets impregnated Rosemary. It's Rosemary's baby. Rosemary's baby. Yeah. They they just and throw so, the Rosemary's baby twist in here for good measure for no reason. Right. <laughs> and it's like why her and why do it that way? Why have this whole convoluted thing where she has to like hunt this girl? Like, do they want to kill the girl or not? I it think seems indi- like they want to kill the girl. I think they're indifferent to her. Right, but she is plaguing the oh, right. shit they out do of them. So, they do want to kill her because she is plaguing the shit out of them. That's true. Right. So, yeah, bring someone in who isn't a skeptic, right? Bring someone in or just don't bring... Don't bring like, anyone Just kill in. the little girl. Just kill the little girl. It's, it's all it's, it's all prophecy. Re- that's the only reason. Like, the first scene is Stephen Ray right. noticing the sickle symbol appearing on photographs of Hillary Swank. So he's like, oh my God, Hillary Swank is the prophesied one. I don't know what, but some portent of doom is about right. to crash through your door. And that is that she's going to be involved in this cult plot, but that's it. That's the only, there, it, there's no reason for it. it. There well is no the reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. The reason is like you're saying where they have some religious text and it says like, you're going to do this, but it doesn't work out for them. Oh, I guess it sort of does double twist because she is impregnated with, I think the devil or the child, the fucking, the Antichrist. I don't fucking know. Uh, it ends with everybody exploding. It ends with. <laughs> that's not it ends tame. like the, that's it, not. It even, that's like, not. That is too mild a word for what happens. Yeah, that is. It ends too like mild a vampire a movie. It ends it's, like a combination between the ending of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. Deep impact. <laughs> yes. And uh, Mortal Kombat? (laughs) Yes. So there's a bunch of CGI locusts, which are pretty fun because they they explode Hillary Swank at one point. They like fling her across the room. Locusts locusts take out like three or four characters. Yeah. And so then it's she real Idris Elba, RIP. He gets murdered by the governor. He gets murdered off screen in a crypt. Yeah. To like make her want to again, they're all. It's the so they it's keep the, saying they're trying to make her want to kill this kid. Yeah, instead of killing her themselves, I don't know why. Um, 
And then she realizes at the last minute, the kid's good. You're all bad. You're trying to kill this kid because of all that. She, oh yeah. When you touch the little girl, she gives you exposition, but not full. Like she doesn't give you everything. You have to keep touching her. She gives you cut scenes. She gives you cut scenes that, that like are ordered in dramatic, like, uh, you know, um, order because at the very end before she kills the girl, the girl shows her, no, I'm innocent. See, they did this stuff, which I would argue the girl should have done right away, but whatever. Um, and so she, she finds out through exposition visions. Um, this has a lot, this has dreams within dreams, this movie. Um, and then she says like, oh, the girl's good. You're all bad. You're trying to stop this plague. And almost like an action line, she goes like, and you know what the last step of the plague is? The, the murder of the firstborns. Yeah, it's, and they, then, they were building up, because we all know it. Like we, yeah. they, they, the filmmakers know that that's the one that everybody knows. Like we know the death of the firstborn, right? Um, and so she establishes the it's a town of firstborn. Yeah, the movie's definitely building toward it. And then, yeah, it's <laughs> like, so it's so funny that they that they wrote it that way, right? That they yeah. had that they had the cult be this complex web of hierarchy and rules and tradition that demands that it only be a cult of firstborn children and it just so happens that the primary the final plague was the death of the firstborn like it's the only move god can do right it's like well if they're not firstborn he can't just smite them it's like i'm pretty sure he smites whoever the fuck he feels like it in the bible like i don't i don't think he needs you to to fall into his weird rules of of weakness like it's not rock paper scissors like i think I think in the Bible, God can do anything. So it's weird that yeah. they wrote that the cult was all firstborn when it was, they just wrote it so that the final plague could be like the fist pump moment when the hellfire screams. In yeah. The sky. And everybody just gets exploded. Oh my God. It's, it, I'm going to do my best to describe it. So beams of fire shoot out of the sky and grab people up like transporters. Yes. And hold them in there and either decide to vaporize them into skeletons and mush or drop them down on the ground. And also they explode when that happens. It's like the ending to like a Blade movie. Like it's just... Right. Or, yes, or like, yes. It is like watching a, a vampire god explode. Like that is what yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, it's like the ending of From Dust Till Dawn. Like these beams and they all just detonate it's one like, by one. It's like if the Independence Day laser was shooting individual people. Yes. It fucking rules. And they're just detonating. It, it is it rules. rules. <laughs> the last I would say 20 minutes of this movie. Like I would count the locusts even though they're dumb, but it it I would I would say that all kind of rules and like The locusts are dumb, again, but it's a, it's at least conceptually horrifying. Like you wouldn't want to get slammed by thousands of giant grasshoppers oh, yeah. and suffocated and bitten to death. That sucks. Right. It's more just that it's it's like this movie has, and again, I, I know why this movie wasn't well reviewed. It doesn't know what it wants to be, and what I mean by that nope. is like it's kind of reminds me of something like The Devil's Advocate, but like less subtle. <laughs> um, it's not quite a horror movie, you know what I mean? Where it's like I there's nothing in it that's I scary. I wouldn't even call it a horror movie. It's more of a mystery. It's more of a suspense thriller. Yeah, like a yeah, exactly. And that's like I wouldn't call The Devil's Advocate a horror movie either. No. So it's it's more like that, but it there are times where it thinks it's a horror movie where it does like jump scares or like, here's a creepy lead up scene where all the lights went off and stuff like that. And those are the scenes where I'm like, I I don't think, I think you needed to just make this dumber. Like it's weird to say, but I think you needed to make this dumber and more fun. I think I disagree. I think you, I think you could make a good movie out of that, out of that twist. Oh no, I agree. I just think the I like the ending more than the rest of the movie, so I'm like make the movie like the ending. Oh, make all the make, it, make all the plagues like jacked up to 11. Yeah, make yeah, it dumb. It. Make, yeah. make frogs fall out of the sky and knock people's heads off. Make it fucking this awesome. Is, yeah, this is two different movies. It's a slow burn gritty horror movie. It's a, with it's, the it's, plagues, a it's like a, you're a, saying. Yeah, it's a slow burn like mystery suspense thriller. And I saw a lot of reviews going that direction. A lot of people saying this is good until the ending. 
fuck you. Uh, but, it's, it sucks until the ending. <laughs> see, that's my view, is that I think a lot of people see this as like, this was a cool slow burn horror, and then the ending ruins it. For me, I was like, I didn't get much out of the first part of this, and then the ending was yeah, awesome. Right. It was an obvious and boring slow burn horror movie until the ending yeah. that blows my tits off of my body. Yeah. So just give me more of that. Yes. <laughs> more... But just I, concentrated beams of God wrath from heaven. It right. fucking rules. <laughs> but I agree, you could do one or the other. Like, you could make a good movie out of the premise that's. You'd have to change everything. You have it's, to make it, a movie. Right. It's just so funny that they, like, needed to position these people exactly in order for the Lord to smite them. I'm like, he's the fucking Lord? Yeah, it's like, very what, funny. Like, how much of biblical mythology are we holding as canon they here? They can literally blink out of existence. It's right, yes. like he just fucking unmake them. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? I don't know, so this is why I like Bible horror, because the Bible horror lore, they, it's usually agreed upon, it's, it's sometimes spelled out, sometimes not, is the idea is that you have Satan's house and you have God's house, and then they have this battleground, right? Between, and I think I'm just describing like religion too, but I wasn't raised religious, so I'm sure there's, you know, I'm just saying very obvious things. But I'm talking about how horror movies paint the picture. And the idea is that neither God nor Satan can directly involve themselves. They can simply influence that battleground, right? And it's a battle of good versus evil, et cetera, et cetera. Um, whereas, like, Satan kind of cheats more. And, like, movies like The Omen, you always wonder, like, why can't God just step in? And so there's this implication that like it's a lot easier to harness evil than to harness goodness or that it's, you know, it's less direct, you know, like God can't decapitate someone with goodness. Um, so that's always I been like, I don't know that as many the implication. Movies, uh, yeah, I don't know that as many movies have meditated on that. Because that, that, no, is, that is yeah. sort of the problem with the omen. It's just like, oh, so the devil just kind of gets to run roughshod, right? It's, it's, right. it's, it's kind of the problem with every possession or demon movie where it's like, it's, it feels like you're only like looking at half the Bible. Right. Which is what makes this movie amazing because this movie has this, uh, the, a different problem, which is that God can do, he can light this fucking dude's house on fire when he pisses him off. So it's like, why not just kill all these Satanists anytime you want? Um, like in this one, Satan is actually not present. God is, it's all God. S it's very Satan little is, Satan. Satan is with a lighter touch. That's the yeah. Satan which, is the lighter which touch. Which that's normally God. Which could have been a good movie. Like you could have done yeah. the hat on the hat reveal at the end because they do the Rosemary's Baby twist at the end where she has a dream where she dreams about having sex with Doug and then wakes up the following morning and goes, "Oh, that was weird." But then at the end of the movie, they reveal that she actually did have sex with Doug. She was drugged, and it's just it's well, just yeah. the scene from Rosemary's Baby. And now she's for the record. Okay. Go Go ahead. Sorry, she she dreams about the sex, wakes up, and then wakes up again. It's like three dreams within right, each other. Right, there are two, two dreams, yeah. Actually makes sense when you realize the first thing actually happened. Wasn't a dream, but, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Anywho. It's like a big, It's you're right, it's a subtle hint that it wasn't a dream. Yeah. Because, I, I, again, I do like this director. Um, yeah, me too. Um, I love Predator too. The Life and Death of Peter Sellers is also pretty decent. Yeah. Um, yeah, this isn't a bad director. Uh, anyway. Oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's fine. Um, the ending that she's impregnated. All right, you, you could, learn that she's. Yeah. You could do such a a good movie. Like you could do a real good horror thriller that just make makes you leave the theater feeling just raw and bad. With both right. of those twists, you could take just the general idea of both those twists where. The initial one is like, oh, it was God the whole time. And then the f the actual ultimate twist is the devil was there the whole time, too. It's just it was the reverse where you think devil is big and loud and God is the lighter touch. It was actually the reverse where God was big and loud the whole time and the devil was the lighter touch and actually got, right. got his mission accomplished as a result. That's a good yeah. that's a good ending for a horror movie. I think this might have been subtly the victim of 2007. That meaning did that this not was a, help. The era of horror this came out in was really bad. Yes. And it was one of those, pro, it's one of those things where like the reason why that happens um, or the reason why I think that happened 
is because bad things got popular and then studios kept making things like like right where like they get this script and they go like well let's add this and that and that why because those other movies did it and so it it's becomes a bad movie because it's trying to be the era it's in i think it was the yeah, ring because of the ring the ring definitely we covered the ring and i i i have a lot of respect for that movie i like gore verbinski but i if people go back and listen one of the things that shocked me is that none of the ring worked on me watching it again and they're, it's for that reason. It's yeah, it's because all the tricks became the tropes. Yeah. And then once you see them enough times, you you kind of start realizing why like I'm just like it's not really that good. It's I mean, actually this, this... a lot of researching of scenes and some jump scares and it just doesn't feel it it's, it's, a, yeah, it it's a lot of library scenes, yeah. Uh, right. which it doesn't hold up. Became the tropes of the time. It's a lot of horror movies from the aughts and teens are research. It's so fucking boring. Um, yeah. There was another. Ah, fuck. I lost that one too. <laughs> I know. Oh, no. Your brain. I know. My brain. It hurts. Yeah. It, I mean, it's just that it, this feels like they had it. They had a like a good idea that then just went through the machine of its time and I made it just um, dumb. It, it's 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 so so much to that point that like they do the ring body in this like the body of yeah. the little girl's brother when they finally reveal it like you mentioned earlier we see we don't see it yet at this point but we see hillary swank see it and she immediately says we need to call the fbi yeah because um, he's just a fucking mummy it doesn't make any right. sense but it's it's based on the ring scare of when you see the girl's body in the closet and it's horrible like, yeah they everyone tried to it, they tried to do that so much that it becomes like a joke on family guy. Right. Where it's like how weird and horrific a dead body. Can we show you like a person, yes. like how obviously can we show you that a person was murdered by a monster with the mute horror of their dead body? <laughs> yeah. So that it, well, it, becomes, kind of, it becomes like parody. <laughs> right. Because it's also like, let's keep it PG 13 too. So there's that element where it's like gray and like, they just have a weird expression of fright. Um, it's just her saying call the FBI is still very funny to me because the, like seeing like seeing like a supernatural thing and saying call the FBI is like, do you mean like Mulder and Scully? Are you talking about Mulder and Scully? Cause that's the only people in the FBI who you could be referring to right now, which don't get me wrong. I'd love for Mulder and Scully to show up during this movie. <laughs> It's, Mulder, that would, Mulder be, would have been just knocked oh, yeah. out by a fist made of locusts. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> just his knocked gun, on the his locust would have taken his gun. Oh, dude, he would have lost. Like, he would have lost his gun three days before the locust strike. Right. It's just he so would have lost his gun see. the second he waded into the river of blood. Yeah, it's just so funny to see something supernatural and go call the FBI. See, like, like, what are they going to do about it? <laughs> What is the FBI going to do in this situation? <laughs> I don't think I have anything. I don't think I have anything else to say about it. No, I mean, I'm surprised we had this much to say because it is like, I agree with you. I, I would watch this on a Friday, but I, we do have to recognize it is dull in some places. It is, it tries to go for suspense. And what that equals to is just a lot of boring scenes. I'd argue. Yeah. Like it's not, this movie didn't like, I don't know. It's fine. The movie, I, the ending makes up for it, but the movie's mostly boring. Right. The the one thing it does is make you care about the relationship between Idris and Hillary Swank, and then they kill Idris. So it, yeah, and then then she doesn't care that much. She doesn't care as like, much as she should. She just like takes her new kid and drives out of the town. And it's like your fucking f best friend and s confidant and and partner, and he was so much to you, and you just left him dead in this catacomb and this weird yeah satan town in louisiana like it's it's weird <laughs> yeah they do a lot of setup that they don't really pay off in any oh no set, they like character a lot setup. of threads they abandon a yeah. lot of threads with a lot of characters yeah they do um but yeah go watch it the reaping sure uh out now out now wherever books are streaming. sold streaming
Yeah. Thank you, Burrito. Thank you. I don't know why. I don't know why (laughs) you gave us this movie, but I'm glad. I've been looking forward to this movie only because I saw it a long time ago and I don't, I didn't remember any of it. I I remember the locust. I remembered this movie coming out because I was using it to clock the time until Spider Man 3 came out. That's awesome. And then I saw Spider Man 3 and it was more disappointing than watching this movie. (laughs) You should have saw the reaping. I should have saw the reaping. It would have had a better time. Uh, anyway, thanks, Burrito. This was Thank um, you. through our Patreon, patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed, G A M E F U L O Y, unemployed. Uh, we watch movies every Friday night, like The Reaping. We also have um, exclusive podcasts for just $5 a month. You can get access to Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Fox Muller is a Maniac, Star Trek The Next Futurama, Spiel Boys. Those are all available for $5 a month. Check it out. We also have a store. Head over to GameFleetEmployed.com where you can find a link to our Teespring store where we have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs. You can get on t-shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all sorts of things. So slap your reaping peepers onto that. Reaping peepers. Reaping peepers. I cannot get over the fact that Stephen Ray was screaming into the phone, you need to murder this girl, and then God blew him up. Yeah. He explodes, He he never even met the girl. He He had no idea. He never leaves that room. He never leaves that room. Stephen Ray was on set for a day. I guarantee it. And (laughs) from that room, he did so much damage that God was like, I have to stop I have to kill him. I have to kill him. He's confined himself to a single room in Chile, and I still have to kill him. Yep. And in a very inelegant way. In a way that implied that God... Just blows him up. In a way where God was just like, I just have... I'm just going to throw a fireball. It's so funny. He kills him like backdraft <laughs> like, yeah. it's the funniest way to kill somebody he's like I gotta make it look like an accident <laughs> I love the idea of God trying to make something look like an accident uh, I wish God showed up and just shot him just shot him and then like had to like put the gun in a dumpster or something like that that's what I want <laughs> God having to play it real cool. God just shows up like with Arnold Vosloo with him, like in Hard Target. Yeah. 